Hi everyone, we've got a handful of headlines for today's Pelicanus news. I've categorized them into wildlife and regulations. These stories are truly incredible and also reminders to me that conservation can actually work. All right, our first category here of wildlife. The first two stories are about the same species. This is pretty great. Uh, the first story here is out of smithsonianmag.com. Critically endangered sea turtles lay eggs on Texas beach. The Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, the world's smallest, rarest, and most endangered, faced a trouble history. But now, the species has a bit of good news. One of these imperiled turtles has laid eggs on a Texas beach. To protect this new nest, conservationists carefully removed and transferred it to an incubation facility, according to ABC, 3, uh, ABC 13. This is because almost all nests in the upper Texas coast zone would become inundated, crushed, or predated, predated upon if left in place, says Teresa Morris, rehabilitation hospital manager at Texas A&M's Gulf Center for Sea Turtle Research, in a statement. These threats are typical for the critically endangered sea turtles, which face a host of challenges. Storms and high tides have eroded Texas beaches, uh, diminishing available nesting habitat, and eggs can be eaten by shorebirds and other predators. And as adults, the turtles might get tangled in fishing gear, struck by a ship, or choked by marine trash. Climate change and sea level rise threaten to alter shorelines and ocean habitats also. Though the Kemp's Ridley is the rarest sea turtle today, it hasn't always been so scarce. In 1947, an amateur video taken near Rancho Nuevo, Mexico, recorded tens of thousands of nesting Kemp's Ridleys in just one day, according to NOAA. But the population crashed in the dec decades that followed. To give the species a better chance at recovery, between 1978 and 1988, scientists brought eggs from Mexico to Texas and released the young turtles that hatched from there. They hoped the adult turtles would return to the nest in the Lone Star State. In 2012, 200 and nests, 209 nests were found in Texas, and globally, after reaching a low of only 702 nests in 1985, the Kemp's Ridley dug as many as 20,000 nests in 2009, but after that year their numbers have fluctuated unpredictably. That's why, for such a threatened creature, Every egg matters, says Dr. Christopher Marshall, a marine biologist at Texas A&M's University at Galveston. God, I love to hear that whole story. That's fantastic. Uh, all right, our second story is, is exactly about the same uh, species, just in a different place. This one's coming out of theguardian.com. Endangered sea turtles found on Louisiana islands for first time in 75 years. For the first time in 75 years, hatchlings of the world's smallest sea turtle species have been discovered on the Chandelier Islands, a chain of barrier islands in the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of New Orleans. Wildlife experts at the Breton National Wildlife Refuge have documented more than 53 turtle crawls and two live hatchlings that were navigating towards the sea. Louisiana's Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority announced in a press statement this past week. So exciting for that little turtle. Next one here, coming out of science.org. Scientists evolve a fungus to battle deadly honeybee parasite. The biggest scourge to bees is tiny, a mite the size of a pinhead that feeds on them and spreads deadly viruses. Getting rid of the parasite, Varroa destructor, is tough. Chemicals can kill it, but the mite has started to evolve resistance to the usual pesticides. Moreover, these and other treatments can harm the bees themselves. Now, researchers have toughened up a mite-killing fungus so it can slay the bee slayers inside a hot beehive. If the new strain passes further tests, it could help honeybees around the world avoid a gruesome fate and reduce the use of chemical pesticides. The beekeeping industry has great need for alternatives, says Margarita Lopez Uribe, an entomologist at Pennsylvania State University, University Park, who is not involved in the fungal research. So it is very exciting to see that there is potential for a non-chemical treatment. Varroa destructor has plagued beekeepers and their bees for decades. Some researchers have hoped to combat them with biopesticides, microbes that naturally target specific insect pests. 
Compared with the traditional chemical pesticides, they are less toxic to other animals, including humans. One biopesticide, the common soil fungus, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, has been used against locusts in recent years. Some two decades ago, researchers at the, universe, or the U.S. Department of Agriculture and elsewhere began to study related species that can kill the varroa mite. Next category. <laughs> These are amazing stories. All right, this one's coming out of yahoo.com. The feds announced $310 million in funding to combat what is called the mega drought. On a tour of increasingly parched California, US, U.S. Interior Secretary Deb Holland visited a water recycling project in Irvine to tout her department's allocation of more than $310 million to, com to combat a western mega drought fueled largely by climate change. Joined by Representative Katie Porter and U.S. Bureau of Reclamation Commissioner Camille Touton, Holland stood before heavy equipment at the Siphon Reservoir Improvement Project and said she felt overjoyed to announce the funding of 25 water recycling projects, 20 of which are in California. These projects will advance drought resilience by bolstering water reuse and recycling techniques while supporting over 850,000 people in providing clean, reliable drinking water to families throughout the West. Holland's announcement comes a week after Governor Gavin Newsom warned that California could stand to lose 10% of its water supply by 2040. The governor released a pledge to revamp the state's strategies to meet the challenges of a hotter, drier future, including boosting its water recycling capacities. The funding announced will come from the bipartisan infrastructure bill that President Biden signed last year. It allocated $8.3 billion to the Bureau of Reclamation for Water Infrastructure Projects. Last story here out of PBS.org. California moves toward phasing out sale of gas-powered vehicles by 2035. That is not very far away. California plans to require all new cars, trucks, and SUVs to run on electricity or hydrogen by 2035 under a policy approved by regulators that seek a dramatic cut in carbon emissions and an eventual end to gasoline-powered vehicles. The decision by the California Air Resources Board came two years after Governor Gavin Newsom first directed regulators to consider such a policy. If the goal is reached, California would cut emissions from cars in half by 2040. The move gives the most populous U.S. state the world's most stringent regulations for transitioning to electric vehicles. It is expected to prompt other states to follow California's lead and to accelerate the production of zero-emission vehicles by automakers. The policy still needs federal approval, but that's considered very likely under Democratic uh, President Joe Biden's administration. This is a historic moment for California, for our partner states, and for the world as we set forth this path toward a zero emission future, Leanne Randolph, chair of the Air Board, said during a public hearing before the vote. The policy allows Californians to keep driving gas-powered vehicles and buying used ones after 2035, but no new models would be sold in the state. <sighs> That's incredible. I hope these stories bring some optimism and lightness to your month, and um, I really look forward to sharing more in the future. Thanks.